and this is my project, Heads Up, Reducing the Risk of Concussion in Girls Hockey Through Root Cause Analysis. Concussions are a serious problem in youth sports, more specifically in girls hockey. In fact, the NCAA sport with the highest concussion rate is women's hockey, making it both worse than men's tackle football and more than double the rate found in men's hockey. While millions of dollars are being spent on diagnosis and treatment, there is very little information on prevention, how to stop the brain injury from happening in the first place. This is a very important topic to me as I have seen the devastating consequences that concussions can have on young girls. Almost all of my teammates have suffered one, if not multiple concussions, and so I wanted to be part of the solution and help fill in this information gap. Through research, it is evident that girls are experiencing concussions much more frequently and more severely than boys, despite having their game being supposedly non-contact. The female brain is structured differently than the male brain, and researchers believe that these brain and other physiological differences are at least partially responsible for this fact. However, based on my observations, I work as a referee in addition to timekeeping, I believe that girls are hitting their heads more often. So, my hypothesis is that in addition to the physiological differences between girls' and boys' brains, there are differences in the way that hockey is trained and hockey is played that contribute to a significantly higher risk for girls. With data analysis, these factors can be pinpointed to support the design of a science-based prevention strategy to lower the risk. To test my hypothesis, I collected both qualitative and quantitative data through surveys of minor league hockey parents, game observation, and interviews with coaches, trainers, and referees. Working with the Flamborough Girls Hockey Association and Carol DiMatteo, a lead concussion researcher at McMaster University. I then analyzed the data collected through statistical analysis using SPSS and drew conclusions on, one, rate and nature of potentially concussive incidents, comparing age, size, gender, two, root causes, the factors that are most likely to cause a concussion and to whom these factors apply. Three, strategies that would be most effective in reducing the rate of concussions in girls' hockey. A more detailed analysis is included in my report, but here are the highlights. In the girls' player survey, the sample population was 170 players, ranging in age from 3 to 21. I collected causative data on 57 concussions with information such as player age, player size, and concussion history. Next, I observed 24 girls games and 24 boys games of approximately equal level in division looking for potentially concussive incidents, or PCIs, defined as a head impact with significant force so that you would consider the player at risk of concussion. There were several key findings from the data gathering. Firstly, the mean number of potentially concussive incidents in girls hockey is 2.3 times higher than boys. This confirms the hypothesis that girls games are providing significant extra risk. This is further evidenced by the four confirmed concussions witnessed, all that happened in the girls' games. I ran a more detailed statistical analysis on the data, including confidence intervals to confirm its significance, which is included in the report. Secondly, penalization rates of PCIs between girls and boys hockey was compared, and it was found that boys games experienced PCI penalization at a rate of 48.6%, suggesting that nearly half the incidents in the boys games were intentional. In contrast, in the girls' games, the penalization rate was lower at 21.4%, which means that the majority of incidents in their games were deemed accidental. This is very key as it highlights the lack of ability to avoid collisions and a lack of referee intervention found in the girls' games. Lastly, I looked at the different types of potentially concussive incidents that were observed comparing girls' and boys' games. In the boys' games, not surprisingly, body checking was the main source of head impact. But for girls, mid-ice collisions with the puck carrier was by far the most common, accounting for almost a third of all incidents. This was followed by pushing and body checking, which together accounted for another third of incidents, which shouldn't be happening in a non-contact league. For girls, hitting their head on the ice was the main cause of concussions, highlighting the importance of managing contact and staying on your feet. To further explore these findings, I conducted a series of interviews with coaches, trainers, and referees. All interviewees were surprised that girls were receiving concussions so much more frequently than boys, but not by the underlying causes of why. As an example, they were not surprised that the number one PCI was pot carrier collisions, 
noting that girls have a tendency to stick handle with their head down, and at risk of sounding sexist, were weaker skill-wise and less able to see situations evolving around them. They were not surprised that body contact and board safety were next. They all felt that we pretend that the girls' game is non-contact when it is clearly not and something needs to be done. All felt that they wanted and needed to do better both in their individual roles and to better protect girls playing the game. All of the research was summarized into a five-step root cause analysis here, which highlighted the key causes of contact in the girls' games. Number one is a lack of body contact and board safety training. Number two is stick handling head down. And number three is the non-contact rule not being enforced. In conclusion, based on this analysis, girls are experiencing significantly more head impacts within hockey games. Coupled with the physiological factors which make them more susceptible to concussion, this explains the higher rate of concussions in the literature. There are several specific steps that could be taken based on this research in the form of a prevention strategy, which is outlined here and in my report, and will be presented to the Flinborough Girls Hockey Association and their coach development program. Thank you.